Welcome to Playing with Junk. Today I want to talk about DY servers. Well, of course, I mean HP servers, and I'm talking about the DL380 series from the generation 1 up to generation 9. The newest model, generation 10, I'm uh, I have not here, unfortunately, but the difference between generation 9 and 10 is not so big, so I think this is a pretty complete collection here. So let's start with the oldest model and take a look inside and if it's still working, well, let's see. By the way, if you are looking at the servers from the side, you see they are getting longer and longer the newer they get. So it seems they had to stuff more uh, stuff inside. Stuff, stuff, okay. So that's the DL380 generation 1. It is not marked generation 1, it has no marking, so that's because it's the first. Uh, this machine is from the mid-1990s. It has two screws here. And the cover doesn't open. That's normal. You need the Swiss Army tool. And that's it. It has four hard drives on the front, here space for four drives. It has space for three optical drives or whatever you place in there or one big tape. It has a floppy power switch and a couple of LEDs. And that's everything you see on the front panel. If you look inside, there is not much to see in the first moment until you remove this cover here, which has some airflow capabilities. Then you see four RAM slots here, only four slots, two processors, Pentium 3 slot uh, type processors, 900 megahertz each. We have two SCSI ports here on board. One goes to the disk enclosure. And that's pretty much about it. It looks a little bit like a normal PC. Two power supplies. You can see them. All good servers have more than one power supply. Just in case one fails, you can exchange it. Uh, while it's running and that's, big, uh, that's why it has a red handle. Red handle means hot swap. It can be exchanged on the fly while the machine is running. Okay, let's power it on and let's see what's inside. By the way, I forgot to mention the back side. We have 68 pin high density uh, SCSI port. VGA, one network port, parallel to serial, PS2 mouse and keyboard, and two power connectors. By the way, I'm using this uh, key, uh, KVM2 uh, twisted pair converter with an appropriate switch. These converters are very expensive, costing $150 per piece, so if you have a switch with 64 ports that will cost you quite a fortune. Uh, I got this used, I got them for free, uh, they came back from a customer so I used them in my workshop but I cannot afford to buy more of them. Okay, let's turn it on. Yellow light means standby, turning green and the machine is on. 
Oh yes, and of course this is not a HP server, it's a Compaq server because Compaq was bought by HP in 2002 so that's shortly after this system BIOS here came out it has an integrated smart array controller it has two processors with 933 MHz and 133 MHz front side bus or memory bus, memory speed yeah, press escape we have one logical drive consisting of two physical drives setup system is set up for Windows 2000 which is perfectly appropriate for that time so let's see how the old smart array configuration utility looks like we have two drives four and a half gigabyte wow and that creates one logical drive in RAID 1 0 plus 1 that's how HP calls it or Compaq yeah that's about it Internet Explorer 5 Firefox very old version and we have a problem with the system cooling for some reason it shuts down after a minute I haven't figured out what's wrong, maybe nothing, maybe only the sensor is faulty, but well, that's it. So let's have a look at the generation 2. It's this tiny little mark here, you see it's a G2 server. What has changed? It got a little bit narrower, it only has two uh, rack units in height it has space for six drives instead of four there's not much more here on the front and on the back side we have two power supplies a little bit different ps2 and new we have usb only one serial port and no parallel port but we have an external uh, high density uh, SCSI connector and there is also a SCSI controller inside that doesn't belong to the base system three slots for cards and that's about it and two network ports it has a fancy new uh, cover mechanism here opens a little bit easier and maybe it reminds you to the stage cases of, uh, of Rockstar so that's the same locking mechanism as this uh, flight cases use and if you look inside it looks a little bit more professional here we have more fans, we have six fans here in the front, we have two more here uh, in the back we have six slots for RAM we have two CPUs under this air flow cover here one CPU, number two two voltage regulators for the two CPUs which are removable from the board that's a good thing because these things sometimes fail uh, two power supply, a power supply pre-regulator going with the cable to the board uh, we have floppy, we have CD and we have a little uh, door here that can fold down to get access to the hot swap PCI boards hot swap PCI boards have been in fashion in the well let's say late uh, early 2000s it was a hype with hot swap PCI so if any card breaks you can exchange it while the server is running creating zero downtime you just push this button wait until a message on the screen comes and 
that your device can be safely ejected. In this case it's important to do it right, not like the USB sticks today. That's why this uh, insulator boards here are between the slots, because if you remove one board and you touch the other board which is still powered and running, that's a bad thing. The problem is there are not so many boards you can actually hot swap because a network card works, you can swap it while the server is running. A RAID controller doesn't work because if the RAID controller doesn't work your server is down anyway. A graphics card cannot be hot swapped because if you don't see what happens on the screen you cannot replace it. You also need the same firmware because the driver will probably have a problem if you come with a card with a different firmware level and so on. And that's the reason why nobody really dared to use that hot swap option. And that's the reason why they gave it up after a couple of years and it's not an issue anymore. Well then, let's turn it on. Yellow light, standby. Green light, power on. Disk making self-test. Noise generator generates noise. This will come down after a while. And again, it's still a compact ProLiant. Uh, the system BIOS is from 2004. Yes, it takes a while until they... But you see, we already have a smart array, an HP smart array controller. And if you look closely, you can see how the text changes from compact to HP. So that's a little gag the uh, technicians from HP have implemented here. We have two CPUs, 1.4 GHz, still 100 33 megahertz front side bus still single core that will change in the i think in the next generation or in the generation after that we have one logical drive as before and the rest that's the additional SCSI controller and i think you know how windows booting looks like so we don't need to film that then here we have the generation 3 server, the difference is here, uh, it looks exactly the same, it has the same length, the same uh, physical size, it has 6 drives here, floppy, CD-ROM, it has a different lever here, which makes it even more, uh, even easier to open the cover. And the back side is exactly the same, except one uh, difference. We have two network port and we have a ILO port. That's the first generation that has the ILO included on the main board. On the earlier ProLine servers you had to buy the ILO board separately. And they decided every server should have an ILO a remote uh, control uh, management thing so they included it on the main board and that's how it looks inside we have power supplies that's the same as in the generation 2 we also have this flap with the hot swap uh, PCI ports fans got a little bit thicker here. We have two CPUs with a little bit bigger heat sinks. You can see them from this side with a nice mechanism to unlock them. You have to remove one fan to get your hands in here and then you remove the CPU and the cooler. They are clipped together. A little bit the pain in the ass if you have to uh, renew the heatsink compound the yes the 
heat transfer compound but it's very easy to install if you have to change a, a CPU or something like that super easy we still have six RAM slots voltage regulators all the same stuff very similar just different processors let's see what they are and you see the logo has changed HP ProLiant we have 2.8 GHz processors and a front side bus of 400 instead of 133 still single core and I think oh yes we have the ILO that's new we have still a smart array 5i with in this case also two drives I think we have seen that before so we can switch to the next generation here is generation 4 and the only thing that has changed from the outside is the screws are gone and they have this uh, lever mechanism to uh, secure the server in the rack to prevent it from get uh, to slide out and the handle has turned from blue to gray that's important we still have six drives SCSI drives three and a half inch and on the back side I promise you is exactly the same two Ethernet one ILO the same thing as the G3 inside it's very similar it's the same fans as the G3 the heat sinks got a little bit bigger more copper they are quite expensive so if you recycle one of them take out the copper heat sinks that's one or two dollars per heat sinks only for the copper alone we still have six uh, RAM slots voltage regulators that looks a little bit different here but I think the power supply are about the same well, maybe they changed a bit they have a different handle but it's more or less the same we still have the flap door here but something has changed we have blue locking uh, tabs here without any button so they got rid of the hot swap PCI and it's just a normal PCI slot where you can only change uh, a card when the server is powered down so therefore we have no more these insulation boards between the slots we don't have the button and the, the lever here is blue meaning cold swap only you have to power down the server before you do anything but they still have this convenient door that's very nice because uh, without that door you have to unscrew this cage this riser cage here uh, to remove the cords and that's a little bit boring okay power up let's see what it tells us uh, something that is remarkable the, with every generation it takes a little bit longer until the picture appears until generation 7 and then they changed something I think their technicians have complained about that so you never know is the server working or not and here it comes the HP logo we have testing memory yes I think the CMOS battery is empty because it always thinks it has new memories 3.2 gigahertz 800 megahertz front side bus still single core one gig of memory okay could be more but this is only what we have here in storage in, in stock uh, we don't need a large amount of memory just to have 
these servers sitting around here. And I think that's it. We are going to generation 5. Oh yes, one difference. We have a small tray 6i now instead of the 5i. Uh, it finds no drives. Yes, there are no drives installed. That's why that's absolutely okay. Well, and that's the generation 5 server. It's now uh, written here. And one big difference is we have now small form factor drives, two and a half inch. We have a nice little display panel that shows us if there are any problems with fans, processors, power supply, whatever. We have a VGA connector on the front, two USB on the front, a CD drive, DVD drive, and also the generation 4 tab is here. And by the way, uh, there is also a difference in weight. Uh, the heaviest uh, units here are the generation 2 and 3 and from generation 4 on they get lighter with every single generation. Okay, now on the back side we still have three PCI slots, two Ethernet, a PS2, ILO, ILO 2 that has changed. Uh, USB of course, serial port and we have a UID switch uh, that has a, a very clever purpose. First of all if someone works on this unit uh, from remote we are the ILO it can turn on that lamp here inside the switch it's a blue lamp uh, to tell the technician that is on, on at, at, at the spot uh, to tell which server he is talking about. Sometimes if you have hundreds of servers in a room it's not so easy to find out which one you actually should shut down and repair and so they can turn on the light. And the other reason that this is a switch because if you stand behind the rack you plug in all your cables then you walk around the rack and maybe there are a couple of racks and suddenly you, you, you're not sure which server it was. I mean, that looks probably like this. So have you been working on that server or on that server or on that server? Because on the back side they look almost the same on the front side or they probably are the same servers everywhere. So you push that button, the blue light goes on and there is another blue light here on the front UID which also has a button. So you can turn the button on, uh, the light on on the back side, walk around the rack, see the button on the front side, can turn it off or on, whatever you want. That's a clever idea and I think that's inspired by the service technicians from HP. They certainly went to the designers and said, hey, it would be so cool to have such a button. Well, and they made one. And that's how it looks inside. It has a massive amount of fans. It has 12 fans. Uh, later models of the generation 5 had only one row of fan. I think it was the, the, fan, the row here behind. Because they found out that it doesn't help to have redundant fans in this way. The cooling is the same if you have only one row. And even if one fan fails there are still two fans next to it blowing the air through the CPU, through the memory slots so they decided to uh, only install half of the fans in the later versions. We have a RAID controller which is uh, plugged in here with a battery here for the RAID cache. We have two processors, also a different heatsink, a little bit a bigger one. I 
just let it in because I don't want to replace the uh, thermal compound. We have two voltage regulators for two CPUs. If you only have one CPU, you only need one voltage regulator. Power supplies are new. They got two fans also for redundancy and also because they are a little bit smaller. And the generation 5 had a lot of problems with power supplies. When I first saw one running, I checked how hot it get and these power supplies are extremely hot. I measured it once, uh, they blow out air with about 50 degrees centigrade and that's way too much. I don't know if they have a, a bad efficiency or whatever. So on the first day when I saw this, I said, well, these power supplies are too hot, they will fail soon, the capacitors will explode or whatever. Well, and uh, it turned out they failed quite soon. After two or three years, they started failing. And we had days when we, that we, uh, where we needed uh, two or three power supply per day. Uh, HP reacted to that. First, they lowered the prices for the power supplies. Uh, at the end, uh, a new power supply was about $120 or something like that, which is really cheap for a, a server power supply. And they also changed the, des the design, so the later power supplies are probably a bit better. They're still quite hot, but well, they I, I think they even changed the manufacture of the power supplies and well, that's about it and uh, the nice door has gone so every time when you want to install a PCI card here you have to loosen this screw that screw remove the entire frame the entire riser box here uh, yes it works but I like the older uh, version a bit better. So let's turn it on. That's the purpose of this display. Then we have our well-known HP logo. And now we have dual-core processors with 2.66 GHz and 1333 MHz front-side bus. We have two of them, so we have four cores in total. We have an ILO2, we have a P400 controller because these are not SCSI drives anymore, these are SAS drives and the SAS controller uh, changed their name to P something. Okay, Windows starting, we know how that works. So that's the next generation, generation 6. So now they all have the, it's, uh, their name here on this corner. We have CD, DVD, optical drive, 8 discs, 4 and 4. We have the diagnostic panel here, front VGA, power switch, UID switch, and a little tab here to pull out with serial number. That's nice because on the older uh, versions you always had to pull out the server and look at the serial number which was somewhere on the side, which was a little bit stupid, so they changed that. Maybe also an input from the service technicians. And uh, this is the first server, I think, where you can have more than eight drives because you can remove the entire block here. 
and put another eight drives here. You then lose your optical drive, but you gain eight additional hard disks. Same form factor as on the G5, same disks, front USB. And on the back side we have two power supplies, new design, much better than on the G5. We have one, two, three, four uh, PCI slots, two for full size cards, two for the smaller uh, size cards. We have ILO 2 as before, but we have one, two, three, four network ports. You see network ports are increasing because more and more people are using virtual servers, virtualize uh, their stuff and they need more network ports for that. VGA, USB, PS2 still here, UID button. Uh, no, there are two more slots here. I'm sorry I forgot that. So we have six in total. So let's have a look inside. The cover latch has moved from the center to here and is now black. Uh, matches the front cover. Back is, black is the new beautiful, as you know. In the early days it was white, grey, black. I don't know what comes next. Super black. Now the annoying part here is this huge metal cover here that has to be unscrewed every time when you want to change memory, CPU or whatever. And it has a lot of screws. It has five screws that need to be released. And then you have one lever here and one lever he here to lift out. I hope that works with only... Oops. There's one screw not completely unscrewed. Yes. Then you turn it over and you get access to... Well, that's the problem. There are only two slots. If you want to use these slots and that slot too. No, that slot is usable. There is a connector. But there is no a uh, razor card here. Uh, well, this you have to buy that extra. It also depends on how many CPUs you have. If you only have one CPU, I think you can only use one razor card and the second only if you have two CPUs. Then the CPUs are under another cover. They are here. And they all have another cover which also presses the heat sinks down to the chip. So let me see that. Yeah, that's the chip, heat sink, thermal compound, and that's the springy spring that pushes this firmly down. And now what you see is we have much more RAM. We have three, six, nine slots per side, per CPU. This gives us the possibility to install a huge amount of, uh, of RAM. RAID controller is on board with the two uh, SAS connectors that go to the front. Four disks per connector. You can see there are four small uh, cables here inside for every SAS connection one. So this is in fact four ports and another four ports. And if you want eight, uh, 16 drives, you have to install a second RAID controller. Yeah, uh, blowers, optical drives, that's the back plane from the disk. You see the two cables coming in here. And there is room for another uh, disk array. 
Okay, that's the G6. So let's turn it on. And as I said before, every generation takes a little bit longer to uh, come up with the picture. And there it is, fancy new logo with high resolution graphics. And the progress bar that takes forever. So that is modern technology. So we have two processors, Intel Xeon X5550 and the fan slow down. After the thermal calibration is completed, thank you, it gets very silent then. Uh, two processors, eight total cores, that makes four cores per processor. We have 36 gigabytes. Uh, press any key to see the option ROMs. They hide this text because it looks better without it. We still have the ILO 2, we have a P410i Smart Array Controller with one logical drive. The 265 MB are the cache RAM of the controller. Escape that, QLogic, blah blah. And then we go to Windows, you know how that looks like. Now on top of the G6 is the G7. That's the 7, that's the 6. They look like twin brothers, they are exactly the same on the outside. Uh, they are also exactly the same here on the back. There is absolutely no difference. Same power supplies, same connectors, I see. Oh no, ILO has become black, it was white before. Oops, it starts again. I don't want that. Uh, they don't write ILO 2. I'm not sure if they're already upgraded to ILO 3, but that would be a reason to, to write it here. So I think it's still an ILO 2, so everything is the same. There are only a few changes inside. Uh, the most remarkable change is that the black cover, the big one, uh, is not there anymore. It's a smaller cover that can be lifted out without removing all that part here. You also have these windows to see which cards are inside, but to install cards you still have to unscrew that thing. It only has three screws, they left away the screws here in the front. You have the same levers, left and right. You have the same CPU. You can also access the CPUs without any uh, removing any parts that need to screw. Um, we have still have three, six, nine uh, RAM slots per processor. The technology here with the heat sinks and stuff is almost the same. We have a little bit faster processors, but at the end there is not much difference between the G6 and the G7. Maybe they went to, no, I think it's still a quad core machine. Uh, then, so I think we, uh, we left that and go directly to generation 8, which, ha which has some more details that changed. Okay, that was generation 7. 
and that's the generation 8 and the first thing that changed in generation 8 it's no longer a G8 it's a gen 8 that's important and we have different disk slots uh, disk uh, carriers here they look different they also have these contacts here because they have the LEDs built in into the frame the older frames had only so uh, only light pipes made of plastic that guided the light from the back plane to the front now they moved the LEDs to the frame itself we have eight drives and we can have another eight drives here instead of the CD drive DVD drive we have the diagnostic panel the pull out tab with the serial number power button is now here which is a little bit dangerous because if you pull out the server and push it in back into the rack uh, it happens that you push the power button something that you didn't want UID button USB VGA analog still the same another USB port here for your diagnostic stick for a keyboard for whatever on the back side we have four Ethernet ports this is a, a small Ethernet card that can be exchanged you can have optical ports 10 giga 1 giga 2 ports 4 ports a whole set of port, uh, boards serial port ILO ILO something I think we are now at ILO 4 standard VGA output a lot of uh, USB ports that's important and we have one two three four five six slots for uh, PCI cards PCI Express cards in this case power supplies more or less the same as in the generation 7 uh, a little bit smaller I think and they finally uh, managed it to have the same power supplies on almost every server of generation 8 so uh, you don't need a, an individual power supply type for each server so most of the generation 8 servers have the same power supply I think it was the same in generation 7 but of the older every single server has a different power supply nobody knew why it makes no sense but well that's it oh and one thing I forgot there are no more PS2 ports so I need another adapter for this one luckily I have one so the principle is the same adapter with a USB cable instead of a PS2 cable the USB are still very expensive the PS2 can be bought for 20-30 bucks because they are flying out everywhere because the new servers don't have PS2 anymore so they are exchanged and uh, you can have them for smaller money so let's turn it on and the first thing is it first blinks green because the ILO has to start first or whatever it does in this time maybe you remember the G6 servers how long it took to create the picture on the screen here you, all, uh, you have almost instantly something on the screen I think it does exactly the same as the G6 but this time they decided to show the user what is actually going on instead of hiding all this behind the black screen and I think that's much better because well you see if your system is working or not right from the fifth second or so and 
you can see what it does and maybe if there is already an error you can also see that And there's the startup screen, similar to the one before, a little bit less graphics, a little bit more symbols. And we have two processors with six cores each, makes 12 total cores, 2.5 GHz, E5-2640. And a lot of memory, 384 GB, Smart Array P420, we are already a little bit higher with the number. And also the disk have changed quite a bit, so the activity light is now circling. That looks nice if you have a lot of disks. They added a light here inside this red button. The red button, if you push that, the handle opens and you can remove the drive. Uh, here we have the problem. This is a RAID 1, which is OK. And this is a RAID 5, where I just before I uh, changed this drive here. So you see the disk symbol is blinking, meaning that this is now rebuilding and that the only one in this RAID set that I can remove. The other one have this do not remove sign on here. So for example, if I remove one of these disks, the other one turns on the do not remove sign because if I also remove the second disk I lose my data so I better put that back in it makes a self test starts spinning up checks whatever it has to check and then the symbol starts blinking maybe Maybe yes. Mm, it seems it was such a short time that it doesn't even need to rebuild. Okay, so well, but something is still that one is has still this symbol on. Uh, maybe it rebuilds somehow differently. At least it doesn't blink, maybe it's actually rebuilding, I don't know what happens here. So this is rebuilding and because this is a RAID 5, this is the only disk that is now, uh, that you can remove because it's already, re uh, it has been removed before, it's not complete. But if you remove a second disk in this RAID, you will lose the data and therefore these lights are on. And also the yellow light here is blinking, telling you that something is wrong. And that will stop blinking when uh, all the discs are rebuilt and all the RAID sets are with no error. It is no problem to turn the server off while it is rebuilding, because when I turn it on again, it just continues where it stopped and everything is all right. So, what do we have inside? We have two Razer cards for the PCI slots, they are like here. Uh, you can only uh, use both cards here if you have two CPUs. So, one CPU, one card, one CPU, one card. 
we have a whole lot more of memory banks that can be accessed when I remove that cover. I think we now have 6, 12 memory banks, memory uh, connectors per CPU, so 24 memory modules inside here. Power supply with its backplane, removable if you have to remove the board. Six fans, as the models before, they can be removed all together, like so. Giving you access, for example, to the super capacitor module for the RAID controller. They changed the battery from the earlier models to super capacitors because they thought this is more reliable. But it turned out that, well, it's not really so because the super capacitors do also fail but for different reasons. Now that's one of these supercapacitor modules and when they fail they normally looks like that so that one looks normal and the other one is bulged. So you may think that the bulged one has failed and the other one is still okay but I think it's not so. The problem here is that we have plus 5 volts here going to one capacitor and the other is in series and then going to ground. And that's everything inside here. There is a little PCB on that side which has a space for resistors like so and that would be a nice thing if they actually were installed but they did not install them. So the supercapacitors have a voltage of 2.7 volt and a capacity of uh, let me see 1734 farad Now if you <coughs> sorry if you connect two capacitors in series you only get half the capacity so the total here is 17 farad that's what is written here but you have twice the voltage so you can go up to 5.4 volts maximum Okay, so far so good if the, co if the capacitors are new. Now, let's say one of the capacitors starts leaking somehow. Current is flowing, the resistance of the uh, capacitors is dropping and the other capacitors will get a higher voltage. So this voltage here will drop to, let's say, 1.5 volt the other one gets 3.5 volts or even worse if this one has a total short that one goes to 5 volts which is almost twice the voltage it was rated 2.7 and then it explodes it blows its steam off here and that's exactly what happens. There is no balancer circuit in this thing. That may be okay as long as the capacitors are new, but as soon as one of the capacitors starts to age, whatever, um, the other one will get a higher voltage and at a certain point they will fail both. If they had added these two resistors, let's say 1K here and 1K here, that's something that other manufacturers, for example Dell, uh, where I made this uh, supercapacitor board, had added. If now 
you have these two 1K resistors parallel to the capacitors. If the resistance here changes, it doesn't matter so much because there is still this 1K. So if this goes to 10K or something, we have still parallel. We have maybe 900 ohms or something, 950, so it's not a big difference. But without anything, maybe they could also install a, a Zener diode here that uh, reduces the, the maximum uh, voltage. But without anything, this is, well, I would say it's designed to fail, to fail. Maybe not on purpose, maybe they thought, okay, that will work, this capacitors are perfect for 10 years. Well, they are not. And that's the back side of the server. We have one, two, three PCI Express slots. There is space for another three slots. They are covered by this cover here. <laughs> um, we have uh, USB 3 connectors. There is a space for another network card with four ports probably or two optical or four optical or whatever. ILO port for network, still analog uh, VGA because they don't want you to uh, change your infrastructure all the time. There is a space for uh, a serial port connector if you still need one. There is a lot of empty space for I don't know what. So let's have a look inside. And at the first side it looks relatively empty. That's because the second razor cord is missing. That looks exactly like this one. There we have the RAID controller card, which has more or bigger connectors. We have here eight channels per connector. This one has only four. It's a smaller one. If you need more disks, for example, if you have the smaller disk, you can install more of them. Okay, there is a, a cover, a large CPU, a lot of RAM. Uh, let's look at the socket here. How does that look? Yeah, it's still the standard Xeon processor socket. I don't know how many pins it has. Uh, is it written somewhere? Can't find it. You can find that out. Just Google for uh, DL380 Generation 9 Quick Specs and you find all the interesting technical data about this machine and what options are available for it and what not. That's the ILO chip that is connected to this ILO port here. That's the entire processing unit for the ILO. And what is interesting is here is the battery for the RAID controller. And yes, it's a battery again. They got rid of the supercapacitors because they found out they failed as often as the old batteries. but. The old batteries have been nickel metal hydride and this is a lithium ion battery. And you know what, they also fail from time to time, but not so often as the supercaps. But time will tell, I mean, generation 9 is not so old. So we will see in a couple of years if this is the better technology. Uh, to save your cache data in the on the rate controller.
and it is a little bit more silent than the previous models and it's also the lightest of all the DL380 uh, servers I think mainly because they used uh, thinner metal they used uh, less uh, heavy parts the heat sinks are, are of aluminium only no more copper heat sinks a little bit larger in size but uh, less heavy uh, the startup looks about the same as on the generation 8 a little bit more text probably we have a Nilo 4 so the evolution didn't stop there and one thing that is new is the HP logo has now this green whatever square thing and uh, the progress bar is also green so green is the new blue for HP uh, and it's not HP anymore it's, it is now HPE HP Enterprise ProLiant because HP they, uh, split itself into two divisions the Enterprise division with all the server stuff, professional stuff and the HP products are no, now consumer stuff like your home uh, entertainment uh, PC, your printer, your cheap printers uh, at home inkjet printers and all that stuff oh I completely missed the CPU but uh, well you can roll the video back and have a look at it I didn't notice I talked too much but well I think that's it that was generation 9 and uh, we are at the end of this uh, journey thanks for watching